my dudes and welcome to my Spookathon vlog. I am so excited for this week. I've got some great books to read this week that I've been saving specifically for October and for this readathon so I am hyped. But first, things don't seem all that spooky in here do they? So let's change that. <laughs> Also, there's tips there now. Yeah, I went to Poundland. I think the gaudier the Halloween decorations, the better in my book. Okay, so now that we have the place spookified, I'm legit expecting everything to fall down at one point because I only use sellotape. But the TBR for this week, these don't really bop, but like if I. Hey. Okay, first challenge is to read a thriller and the one I'm reading is The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I've actually already started this. I had to pop out earlier to go to the pound shop to get, you know, the Halloween decorations. I couldn't help myself. And I've started the audiobooks. I'm only a couple of chapters in. And we've just been introduced to our main character, Harriet, who lives in Brighton and she gets a letter from a solicitor saying that she has come into a lot of money from one of her grandparents, her grandmother, I believe, but her grandparents died 20 years ago. So it seems like it's a miscommunication. They've sent the letter to the wrong person, but they have the same last name, which is Westaway. And part of her's like, nah, okay, clearly this is a mix up. But the other side of her is like, hmm, I could probably get away with this. So she's been invited, I believe, to this house. This, Like, I think it's the house that she gets from what I've heard of. Bella is yelling. <laughs> The house is in Cornwall, I believe, and our main character, Harriet, gives tarot readings. She gets paid to give tarot readings at like Brighton Pier or Brighton Market, I can't quite remember. And she believes that she has the cunning because she can fool some of her customers into believing things. She believes that she's cunning enough to get away with it. So she's gonna go for it. She's gonna try and get this inheritance because she's in a bad financial situation at the moment. So. That's where this begins. Um, I do like the audiobook. I probably will switch to physical because I prefer to read thrillers physically, but really excited about this one. I know Lala loves it. I know a lot of people love this thriller, to be honest. The next challenge is to read a book that has red on the cover. I'm gonna go with The Dumb House by John Burnside. I think this counts as red. It's a nice short book. Oh, I should say as well, all the ones that I'm picking for this week were on my Wheel of TBR, so it works out perfectly. This one we have a character called Luke who when he was a child his mother would tell him the story of the dumb house which was an experiment on newborn babies raised in silence designed to test the innateness of language. Um, Luke grows up and his interest in language and the delicate balance of life and death leads to amateur dissections on small animals so creepy already and then his obsession deepens and he ends up doing a bizarre experiment on his own children. Heard this is really 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 weird and kind of hard to get into i've heard it's a slow start but it's only 200 and something pages so that's for the second challenge the next two challenges are read a book with a spooky word in the title or read a book with a spooky setting both of these could work we have neil gaiman's graveyard book this is a middle grade it does come with some illustrations i've had this on my tbr for i'd say probably two years i've had this physically so it's about time I read it. So we have some illustrations in here and it's about a young boy who grows up in a graveyard and I believe the spirits basically raise him and teach him the ways of life. So I heard this is really cute actually. So maybe not the scariest but still spooky. And then I have Horror Store by Grady Hendrix which I'm going to be buddy reading with the lovely and amazing Gab. I'll link his channel as always. He actually gave me this one for my birthday because we both loved My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I'm expecting this to be funny as well as spooky. So essentially it's about a haunted Ikea store, although it's not Ikea, it's or Sorry about that, my memory card was full, so if it looks a bit different, that's why. But this book, this is what I was talking about, this one's about a haunted Ikea store, essentially, where a group of employees stay overnight to try and figure out what's happening because creepy things are happening within the store. And we have mixed media, different furniture at the beginning of every chapter. So Gavin and myself will be buddy reading this, and I'm so excited for it. So those are four. 
I'm really excited for all of these to be honest that are on this week's TBR but we have a fifth challenge and the fifth challenge is to read something you wouldn't normally read and if you watch my wheel of TBR this month you'll know that smut came up the wheel almost did me dirty but I got smut and that's not something I usually read I've read a couple I say that I guess that you could say are slightly smutty I read and enjoyed uh, red white and real blue and the kiss quotient but adult romance or anything like that's not really my thing when I my favorite genre is fantasy and when I read fantasy I usually get annoyed if the romance takes precedent over the plot in a book so not my usual thing but I'm open to trying it and I asked for recommendations so thank you to all of you that left me recommendations on that video and a bunch of you did suggest reading a paranormal romance smoky spooky sorry smutty book so I have so many recommendations and I'm gonna go through my comments today on that video and tally everyone's recommendations have a look at what we have there and the one that seems to be the most suggested that's also spoopy in some way paranormal romance i will read so i will do that later on and i will let you know what i actually pick maybe tonight if not tomorrow for that prompt but these four definitely and then something smutty <laughs> Hello, it is Wednesday, my dudes, and it's day three of Spookathon. I have you on top of the cat pose, so you can only see the top of the flat because this place is a mess. I'm a little bit of a mess. I wasn't feeling well yesterday, so I didn't update you, um, but that meant I didn't do any physical reading, but I did listen to pretty much, well, I listened to the whole of The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware, and I really liked this. So one book down and one challenge down. This was for the challenge to read a thriller. I don't feel like I gave you a very good synopsis of this one. Basically, we follow a character called Harriet Westaway. She's down on her luck. Her mother passed away a couple of years ago. She doesn't have any family. She's been grieving. She's very much alone. She actually has a loan shark after her and the way she makes a living is by doing tarot readings on Brighton Pier. But one day she receives a letter out of the blue from a solicitor telling her that she's due some inheritance from her grandmother who's recently passed away. But from what Harriet knows about about her grandparents have all passed away a long time ago. So she's pretty sure there's been a mistake, however she's so down on her luck she thinks, hey, if anyone can do this, if anyone can dupe these people into believing that she is this long lost granddaughter, then she can because that's what she does for a living. She does believe in the tarot cards as a kind of guide, but she doesn't believe in any kind of psychic readings or anything like that. And she uses people's body language and prompts and things to kind of give accurate readings for people so she believes that she could basically pull this off so she gets to the manor there's a obviously a funeral she meets her uncles and the story goes on from there it's a very creepy old manor there's a housekeeper who's all kinds of again creepy and we find out that Mrs Westaway the grandmother wasn't a very nice person either and we also have kind of split chapters so we have her perspective and then we'll have diary entries occasionally scattered in here from someone who was at the manor in the 90s that's all I want to tell you because you can discover the rest for yourself it's a thriller I don't want to give too much away so this is a review of the audiobook but I really liked the narrator I liked all the different accents I thought that she did them pretty well the atmosphere was really good in here with it being a creepy setting this old manor house or mansion or estate or whatever you want to call it and I really like the family dynamics in here essentially it is about uncovering family secrets so overall it was a lot of fun I will say I guessed the reveal I think there's a couple two or three reveals towards the end of this book that I guessed them all but I will say it did make me doubt myself numerous times going through this book. Every time we found out something new, I would second guess myself. So it wasn't like I was completely surprised, but it still kept me engaged, had me guessing throughout the whole thing. I really liked this. I see the hype with this. I'm giving it four stars. It's not a five star thriller for me, but I definitely want to try more Ruth Ware now. I really want to try her new one. What's it called? Lock and Key? Something like that. I'll put it on the screen. And I also have a couple of her books um, that are second chance books as well that I should probably get to. But one book down. And what I'm going to try next... I'm either going to go for The Dumb House by John Burnside because it's nice and short and I think I can get it done in one sitting but then again I could also possibly get um, The Graveyard Book done in one sitting as well so this is going to be all kinds of creepy and weird and this one is going to be I think really really cute so do I want spooky or spoopy? 
the important questions. But just now it's around six o'clock. I am currently uploading my last week's vlog. I wanted to get out yesterday, but I wasn't feeling very well and I just had a, like a really bad headache. So I couldn't really be staring at the screen to edit. So I finished that out just now uploading that and then I'm going to get in the bath and read one of these but I'll let you know my first thoughts whichever one I decide I'm also of course reading this one this week at some point with Gav I need to message him and figure out when he wants to start it but so far I'm feeling pretty confident oh also yesterday I did some bullet journaling as well I did finally finish my spread for spookathon so I haven't finished it completely I've still got to do some coloring but if you saw last week's vlog you'll have seen my setup for my whole page but this is my October spread you can't really there we go I drew a Ouija board that's the theme Halloween this is my month at a glance wheel of TBR page yet to be colored in and then what I did or what I finished off yesterday was just the outlining for these two pages so I have my whole page with my gravestones I also drew a little hand here coming out of the grave I thought that was funny and then my spookathon page I have um, just a couple of Nightmare Before Christmas doodles on here and the books I'm reading for each challenge so I can tick this first one off now. So I have myself a gold pen here and I can just tick off the first one. Oh, I did that. That was terrible. There, there we go. First challenge down. So I don't have a lot happening tomorrow so I think I'm gonna actually complete this hopefully tomorrow and just colour it all in and fill in the things I need to. But yeah, the priorities for tonight is to get that vlog up and to read. So like I said, I'll decide whichever one I pick up. I will let you know about as soon as I've read some. Hey, 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 it's Thursday and Spookathon day four. I picked this, I picked The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman and I'm so glad I did. I didn't manage to read it all in one sitting. I did get in the bath last night and read some of this but it was getting quite late and I read up to page 175 so I'm over halfway in, didn't take me long at all. I'm finishing this today and I'm fully expecting to love it. It is the perfect combination of creepy and cute. I thought this was middle grade but from the off it's really dark and I was kind of taken aback so I looked on Goodreads and it is listed as YA which makes more sense but we have some really cute and again creepy illustrations in here. Some of them are quite unnerving and it's a treat to have them alongside the text. So this goes full in in the first chapter. We have the murder of a family. We have this guy Jack who's murdered a family although he's missing one of the kids, one of the toddlers and that just happens to be our main character Bod who gets out of his crib, goes on a wander, like just at the perfect time he manages to get out of the house and goes down the hill and ends up in a graveyard and this guy, this murderer Jack comes looking for him but the ghosts decide that they're gonna take him and raise him as their own so he's a live boy he's the boy is alive the boy who lives <laughs> well anyway he's alive but he's been raised by the dead so all his friends are ghosts we have one guy called Silas who can kind of go between the living and the dead and he provides him with food and stuff but it is just really cute the way he's just so brave there's all these very scary and sinister seeming things in this graveyard but he just gives no f's no, f I don't know why I censored myself there. <laughs> he gives no fucks and he is incredibly curious and will just go up and talk to them and it's just so cute. <laughs> there is more to the story than just seeing him growing up amongst these ghosts and being raised by them. They're trying to teach him things as well like how to vanish or disappear etc. Walk through walls which is really funny to see. But there is more to the story than that. There's a sinister plot in the background which we're finding more about now but not quite so I'm very eager to carry on with this. We don't just have ghosts in here we have different creatures which are all really Really interesting to read about. I just love Neil Gaiman's writing style as well. He just completely envelops me in the story, carries me away with his whimsy and I am 100% here for it. I also love that there's, there's some kind of mythological, mythological things in here and there's a festival of the dead and there's just yeah little old wives tales and things in here. It's very cute and yeah just loving this a lot. So I'm gonna carry on with this and finish this out today but before I do I received Received. I received a parcel from the lovely people at Gaston Luger and I'm very excited to open this. If you weren't aware of them, they are a Swedish company. They're a bag company and um, they make backpacks. It's Scandinavian design. Really beautiful looking designs and the quality is really good from what I've seen. And so when they emailed me and asked if I'd like to receive one of the 
the bags, I jumped at the chance because your girl needs a backpack. I have a backpack, but it's crap. The um, tie fastening is all broken, and um, so I've been in the market for a new one. I've been taking out canvas bags on my little charity shop excursions, but then they get too heavy because your girl has no chill. So I'm constantly moving them from one shoulder to the next, so I really need a backpack to distribute the weight evenly. So yeah, I've been wanting a backpack for a minute, and then when they emailed me, oh god, I'm just so excited to see what this looks like. They also gave me a discount code, so if you'd like to have a look at the website yourself, Itself. Um, the code is Cody15, which will give you 15% off your purchase. They also do free delivery and free returns. So it comes in this lovely dust bag. So it's nice and protected in here. I went for a medium size. I didn't feel like I needed a big one, but this is actually a great. This is the perfect size for me. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, this is what it looks like. I might need to back up a little bit. Da da in her splendor. So it's a lovely durable fabric here and then like a faux leather top. We've got a little latch there. Latch? That's not the word. It's not a popper either. What is this called? Let's go with fastening. A nice fastening to it. And then when you open it up, it's got a, draw, a drawstring. Wow, I'm doing such a great job of this. But on the inside, it's lined in this lovely what colour would you call that? Like fuchsia-y, lilac -y, burgundy <laughs> silk lining with the brand in there. It's got lots of pockets in here too. It's got a large one here which could fit a book, you know. <laughs> and then a couple of smaller ones lower down here if you can see that. And the straps are adjustable on the back. I should tell you which one this is. This is the classy in black because you know we like to keep it classy over here. <laughs> Who am I kidding? But this helps. This is stunning. Oh my god. Thank you so much to the lovely people at Gaston Luger. This is completely my vibe. I had to go with black. They've got lots of different colours. Well, a few different colours and different designs. But black goes with everything. And it matches my soul. And I just love this so much. You'll be seeing this a lot because I'm going to be using this all the time. It's a big enough size to fit a laptop in as well. But I'm primarily going to be using it for books. I don't transport my laptop a lot. But if I wanted to, I can now. But the ultimate test is how many books can I fit in here. So, let's go for some hardbacks. That's one. So three thick hardbacks in there and a paperback. I don't know if you can even see all four of them. But there's four books in there and it closes just fine. I mean, it's it's heavy, but... Oh, and also I have a little, oh, like a little travel bag that came with this too, which is just clear. So if I ever go on holiday, I can put my cosmetics in here. Yay. I really like this. It's like a little wash bag as well. Oh lovely super fancy as well it's got the brand on it here and i believe there's a campaign just now on the website where you'll get a free travel bag with every purchase so that's an added bonus i am over the moon thank you so much to the people again at gaston luger of course i will leave the website and my discount code in the description if you'd like to check them out yourself they're really good quality oh i've already somehow marked it but they are really good quality <laughs> lovely designs if you want to check them out too so do that if you'd like to so nothing exciting happening here today i think i'm just gonna read the rest of this and i think i'm going to do some bullet journaling and i'll actually finish out the bullet journal and i'll film it for you so that's what i'm gonna do now can you hear that i've just opened the windows because i've had the heating on and it got too hot so i needed some fresh air bloody bagpipes all the time. I gotta say, I love Scotland, but I hate bagpipes and they follow me. I think it stops. I don't even think there's a church near here that it could be for a wedding or anything. And also it's the evening. So why? Have they stopped or are they gonna torture me some more? Oh, no, nope, started up again. Just don't see the appeal, y'all. Watch all my Scottish friends throw me out the country. <laughs> anyway, to bullet journaling.
Hello, it's Friday, it's now the weekend. My camera battery died, so I didn't finish out my bullet journal last night, but I'll show you what I did and then I'm gonna carry on and finish it out today. So you saw this page and then on this page, I just added in some videos that I'd done and my mood tracker down here. I'm just doing patterns on there. I did some little star doodles. And then on this page, I finished out the wheel. I wish I'd spaced it down a bit or put this up, but you know, regrets. Also, I kind of fucked up this pumpkin. Yeah, I don't know, it looks hairy, I don't know. Um, I also did my little shelves here, so I've read five books already. I did finish the graveyard book up here. I gave it four stars, I'll talk to you about that in a second. So I've just um, ticked off the ones I've read. I'm expecting to read three more by the end of this week, hopefully, because I feel like I'm a little, fat little bit behind. And then I just have this one to do, so I'll show you how I do that. <laughs> but first, let me tell you about the book. So I finished The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This was so good. It was humorous and whimsical and really creepy and atmospheric. I kept describing this as cute yesterday, I think, but as you get further into it, it gets less cute and more creepy. The ending was really bittersweet as well, but I liked how it ended. I just, I ate this up. <laughs> We eaten good. Also, Bod was a really good character too. And when I got to the end of this book, I noticed, because I didn't know, but actually Dane did comment on one of my videos and told me that this is actually a retelling of the Jungle Book, which I didn't know. So thanks Dane, if you haven't checked Dane out yet, link in description. And it says at the end here that he owes an enormous debt, conscious and I have no doubt unconscious, to Rudyard Kipling and the two volumes of his remarkable work, The Jungle Book, which I haven't read. Should I read it? Let me know. And currently I'm reading two books. I know, who is she? Firstly, I started my buddy read with Gav of Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. This is so much fun. I read past where I was supposed to. Also, you know we love Gav, link in description. But we were gonna try and read like 65 pages a day up until Sunday. I got carried away and I'm on like chapter seven, which is page 97. So I still have some more to read today to catch up if we're doing that kind of schedule of 65 pages a day. Not that we really are, you know, it's chill, but this is so much fun. All the mixed media is so cool. So we have like a map, whoa, fucked it. A map of the showroom floor and we have Things like this that you would expect to see in Ikea. Ikea is mentioned in here. This is just a worse version, it seems to be. Or maybe a nailed it version, you know, a Pinterest fail. Um, but we start off with a character, I've forgotten her bloody name. Amy, I was gonna say Alex, it's not Alex, it's Amy. <laughs> And she's been working at Osk for a while. She's not very happy there. She thinks she's gonna get the sack at some point or get fired if you're not British. I use British slang all the time, I need to stop. So she's really scared when her boss calls her into the office, but he just wants her and another colleague to have a shift overnight with him and just patrol the shop floor because things have been happening. Furniture has been destroyed overnight. No one knows what's happening. The security cameras don't say anything. Creepy stuff is happening, y'all, including Every time the staff members are out, are out on the shop floor, they'll get texts from a weird number that says, help me. Like that's just one of the things. There's also creepy graffiti in the bathrooms. Also, there might have been something before Orsk was there. Like Orsk is built over something. I don't want to give you any spoilers, but I know it's going to be good. But this is so much fun. I need to message Gab and see how he's finding it. But oh, this is great. I knew I would like it. Like the humor in here is great too, because I liked my best friend's ex them so much but loving this one and then I also started The Dumb House by John Burnside. I'm not that far into it. I'm 62 pages in and whoa <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting but damn this is really messed up really messed up from the off. We start I'll tell I'll just read you the first line it says no one could say it was my choice to kill the twins any more than it was my decision to bring them into the world. So I think I told you what this one was about at the beginning of the week, but essentially it's about a character called Luke who grew up, his, well, he was really close to his mother. His mother would tell him stories of a dumb house where there was ex an experiment on young children to do with language. So it was the whole thing of if they're not taught to speak, will they come up with their own language and is language, does language make you closer to God, etc. So there's also talk of other cases. Um, there's a couple, I can't quite remember the names of them where 
kids have been kept in a room alone and didn't ever learn language so I'll put the names here um, you might be aware of them already so he's just completely fascinated by the concept and in this book he decides to do that to his own children it says in the synopsis so what a start in line I will say Ooh, this is, yeah, trigger warnings galore. We've had some sexual abuse in here, some rape also um, against a child too. And we haven't really got to anything gory yet in that sense. Like I'm expecting him to do some dissections on animals because it says that in the synopsis too. So trigger warning there for that as well. Um, yeah, but I am just completely absorbed from the off. I have a morbid curiosity and I want to know what the hell is happening. So at the beginning of this, he's just talking about the relationship with his mother, the experiment. And we've just had the introduction of a woman called Karen, who he becomes close with as he wants to monitor her son who is mute. So yeah, it's, it's just really unnerving so far. It's a lot. Yeah, this could be good. This could be really good. I am just, I need to know what happens. So I'm having a great time with these two. <laughs> I am loving my reading choices this week, but I did a bad thing. I regret the thing I did. Everyone seen the TikTok? Um, I went off the TBR and I didn't even pick any of the physical ones I have because I've been watching a lot of the Spookathon um, daily vlogs this week and just watching a lot of like the spooky book recommendations recently and everyone keeps talking about Ruth Ware's newest one and I really wanted an audiobook to listen to whilst I finished out my bullet journal. It wasn't enough of an excuse. I know, I just really want to read it. So I downloaded The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Um, I can't remember the synopsis of this one. I think it's a dual perspective between someone who's a psychologist and a patient. I can't quite remember. So I should probably look that up. I'm sorry, I'm a terrible booktuber, I know. <laughs> Come on, Goodreads, it's not that difficult. It should be right at the top. There we go, The Turn of the Key. Oh yeah, I completely forgot the main <laughs> plot hook of this is that we have a character who was a nanny and then goes to prison for the murder of a child, I think. Um, but she's telling someone that she's wasn't that she's not guilty. And she's writing to her lawyer from prison. So I don't know where I got the psychologist thing from. Maybe that is a thing in the book. I don't know. I've just heard a lot of people talk about it recently. Clearly I didn't take in exactly what it was about, but I just heard a lot of good things. So I'm going to be listening to that today as well. Whilst I finish out the last couple of pages of this, I know, what bloody date is it? Is it the, yes, yeah, 18th. And I'm only just now finishing it. I should probably start on November now, right? Anyway, so I'm gonna do that. I'll show you just a little bit more of that and listen to some Turn of the Key. And then later on today, I'll be continuing with these two and I'll probably give you an update tomorrow because I'm very conscious that I don't want this vlog to be stupidly long because I am reading so many books this week. I also need to still decide on the book I'm reading for Smut, which I will be doing this weekend. Um, I don't have any plans this weekend now. We were supposed to be, well, we always play D&D on a Saturday, um, but Logan has a poorly eye. So our DM has been compromised basically. So we can't play on Saturday. So I've got the free, like a whole week weekend free now I don't have therapy or anything so hopefully gonna get a lot of reading done and hopefully I'll actually leave my flat this week at some point because that's been minimal the weather has been awful though in my defense anyway I'm rambling to the bullet journal and I'm gonna start listening to um turn of the key and shine <laughs> happy Saturday I'm <am> sorry <laughs> Hello, it's almost already four o'clock on Saturday. We got up really late, 
but we're gonna head into town because I've been getting cabin fever. I haven't read that much since yesterday. I read some more of Horror Store last night, but I fell asleep. But it's really, really good. That's not the book's fault, it's on me. So about 150 pages in, Gav and I are both loving it. We've been talking about it. It has surprised me a couple of times. I thought the plot was going in one direction and it completely did a 180 on me. It's really dark and really messed up, but also really funny because we have this manager character who's constantly sprouting corporate spiel, like he loves his job, he loves the company, so that's a lot of fun. So hopefully we're finishing that, if not tonight, then tomorrow with Gav. I've also just been listening to a lot of The Turn of the Key, I haven't picked up The Dumb House, but that's really good too, I've just been listening to the audiobook for that one. We have our main character at first just trying to reach a lawyer to get some help because she says that she's not guilty, she hasn't killed this child, and now she's just recounting where it began, so from the job listing to her interview, so it's with a very rich kind of middle class family who have this huge house in the Highlands. It's a smart house as well, um, which is really cool with them being architects, so the title makes sense, everything is automated, and I think that these kids are gonna be creepy, and that's one thing that really unnerves me in horror books and horror stories, it's creepy kids. So I'm excited for that. Also, I think there's gonna be a romance in there, there's a Scottish handyman that she really seems to like and is dashing and all that, so yeah. So far, so good. I really need to read The Dumb House. I'll do that later tonight. That is probably the most messed up book I've read in a long time. And I'm only 60 pages in. So Massey and I are gonna pop to town. And yeah, I'll talk to you later. Before you came round, my heart would never be much faster. Before you came round, I was ready to slow down. Before you came round, I was heading for a small disaster Before you came round I was ready to blow me down <laughs> Hey lads, it's now Sunday late afternoon. Got a bit of a late start again today. I could not sleep last night. I was having some really weird dreams, tossing and turning. I think it's because of the books I finished last night, which I'll talk to you about in a second. But first, as you saw yesterday, you've probably seen these in the B-roll, but I went to, uh, well, we went into town. We visited some bookshops. I went to Waterstone specifically for one of these books because the lovely Frances, thank you again Frances, she sent me a national book token for my birthday which was in July and it's now October. It took me a long time to decide what I wanted to spend um, on that or spend that on and I really wanted a children's classic for next month's Believe-a-thon that I hadn't read and I told Gav and Gav sent me the like a picture of this one that he just bought and y'all isn't this the most beautiful edition of The Wizard of Oz you've ever seen? I've never read this book but I loved the movie as a kid. I had a pair of Dorothy shoes I used to call them, like red sparkly shoes. The Wizard of Oz was my jam so I got this one and then I also, I thought this was a complete cover buy, complete cover buy but I have been wanting to try some Poe. I've only read The Telltale Heart, I haven't read any of the others. I do have um, The Murder in the Rue Morgue and other tales, don't know if I got that correct. Um, but I saw this one and it's holographic and I just couldn't not. <laughs> So it's The Telltale Heart and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. We also have some illustrations in here. In here. This is the British Library Edition. Freaky looking, but I picked these two. Um, thank you so much, Francis, again, for the National Book Token. I think I've picked some good ones. I wanted to get something that I knew I'd probably love, but hadn't read yet. And I'm a sucker for a beautiful edition or a beautiful book in general. So I wanted to get some really pretty ones for my collection. That way, you know, they feel a little bit more special because they're a gift. I don't know, but I'm really happy with my choices. And yeah, thank you again, Frances. I will be messaging her and thanking her personally too. So that's what we did yesterday. And then, as I said, I finished the books. These two. 
Firstly, I finished Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I think I'm going with a four star for this one. It was so much fun and it was really disturbing in places. There were some definitely gross parts as well. It did feel a little bit ridiculous at times, but I loved this ending. It's not a five star for me. I feel like it would need to be fleshed out a bit more. I needed more for it to be a five star. But this ending though, if you've read it, let me know your thoughts on it because I absolutely loved this. I'm pretty sure Gab is loving it too. I need to find out if he's finished it. I absolutely loved the formatting of this. It was so much fun and also genuinely terrifying in places. Like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to look at Ikea the same way. I'm not going alone to an Ikea ever probably because of this book. I really really enjoyed this. I can't wait to read more from Grady Hendrix. I definitely need to read We Sold Our Souls. I think that's the only one like other one that he has out that I've not read. But yeah a four star for this. So fun, so quick, genuinely scary in places, hilarious in well hilarious might be a bit of a reach, funny in places, really enjoyed it. And then I finished The Dumb House. Dumb House. This is set in, well, this is set up in three parts. The first part was, I was really invested and the latter part I was really invested, but the middle part kind of meandered for me a bit. But this again is only 200 pages, so it was quite quick to get through. But I'm not sure how I feel about it. I put it down yesterday and it completely unnerved me and unsettled me, definitely. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe like a free star for this because it did get a bit boring in places. It was really descriptive about just day-to-day -day things and I wanted to get back to the story because I'm impatient and it was really creepy. But today, I can't stop thinking about it. So I think I'm gonna give it a four star, you know, because it really did unsettle me. Trigger warnings for so much in here. Our protagonist is a bad dude. He is incredibly creepy and he can tell he's just got a lot of issues. You do empathize with him a little bit, especially when it comes to the death of his own mother, who he's really close to. But there are so many trigger warnings for this. It definitely made me feel uncomfortable, which I feel like that was the aim. I mentioned about this book that there is rape and sexual assault, definitely. He also has a relationship with what we can assume is a child. We never find out her age, um, but she's quite childlike. So beware of that, there's also paedophilia. He talks about how that's a turn on for him, that he doesn't know her age, so you know. It's a lot to read, it is, and then also he, there's some animal mutilation in here, which is in the synopsis, and then ov obviously as well there is the murder of his own children, which you, that's like the first line of this book. So yeah, really creepy, it definitely set an atmosphere, I'll tell you that much, and it did have me on the edge of my seat for the first part and the latter part, like the last 30 pages. But the middle, mm, so that kind of brought it down for me. But like I said, I can't stop thinking about it this. I had such weird dreams after reading these two. <laughs> I got up so late today, in a daze, confused about what I dreamt about and I feel like it was just because I'd read these two before I went to bed. So I think I'm upping this to a four star because I, this is gonna stick with me. It really was unnerving. Not, if, not for everybody. I wouldn't recommend this to everybody. If it sounds like it's not your thing, give it a miss. You probably won't like it. But this one was a lot of fun if you like horror. So really happy I finished those. So that's four books down for four challenges. She's on a roll. I'm also gonna tick the books off my spookathon page in my bullet journal. So read on the cover, The Dumb House. She's read it. Spooky word in the title, horror store. She's read it. So, four down, one more to go. And you'll notice I haven't wrote the title on here because I was tallying up the recommendations from my Wheel of TBR video for the smut prompt, which I mentioned, I think at the beginning of the week. So I've got my trusty Kanye notebook here. And actually the winner was one of the top comments on my video, but I will show you, I did tally everything. Um, so just in case there was one, you know, that got mentioned a lot more than the one that got liked the most, um, but I did tally everything. Some standouts I'd already read. I've only read two books from this list and that was The Kiss Quotient and Red, White and Roll Blue. So maybe I have dabbled in adult romance, but not really, you know, I've only read those two. Other Contenders Fix Her Up was very popular here, which is already on my like Goodreads TV because I've heard so many good things about it. And also Lesson in Thorns was very popular too. And The Deal, um, those are some of the top ones that on Honeymooners, lots of Christina Lauren choices 
in here. But the one with the most votes or my top comment, I will tell you who that was from actually. <laughs> we have a comment from Erin Fox. So thank you Erin. She says, for Smut you should read Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. It's a vampire romance and perfect for October and it has 11 likes. So I, whenever had any recommendations had a like, I also tallied that. So Dark Lover by J.R. Ward is what I'm going to be reading. I obviously left it till the last day of the <laughs> readathon to actually choose it because of course I did but I went on and just got the Kindle version. So let me bring up Kindle. There it is. Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. I actually looked on Goodreads and it has over 400 pages and that's what I'm going to be reading today. I didn't realise it'd be so big. <laughs> Oh god. And I don't really know what the plot is, I just know that it's a vampire adult romance so we'll find out together. I don't really want to know before I go into it. But I'll be reading that today. That's the last book for the last challenge and also for the smut prompt for my wheel. So yeah, I don't know what to expect. And also my family watch my videos so mum if you're watching, grandma, Ashley, Harley, my little brother, my nephews, if any, any of y'all are watching stop here please because it's just gonna be awkward. <laughs> so. I'm gonna read this today on my phone and um, so I would do a time lapse but I don't think it's all that exciting if it's just my phone right and um, yeah that's the plan and then later today Massey is gonna pop out to the shop for me because he's an absolute darling and he's gonna get us some pumpkins so we're gonna carve some pumpkins later and watch some scary movies or maybe Hocus Pocus <laughs> and then yeah I will give you my thoughts as I read I've forgotten the bloody name of it <laughs> Dark Lover, yeah. I'll give you my thoughts as I read Dark Lover today, but I'm determined to finish it today so I can read five books. Also, I'm still listening to Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. It's not really on the TBR, but I'm listening to that one as well. And we've met the husband and he's, oh, I don't like him very much. Don't want to give you any spoilers, but oh. The kids aren't actually all that creepy, which I'm a little bit bummed about because I thought that would be the case. But apparently the nannies have kept quitting and this is why they needed a new nanny so quickly was because the last one quit out of the blue and said it was because they believed the house was haunted like the locals think that the house is haunted and some creepy shit is happening so I'm I'm enjoying this and I was listening to this this morning and Massey was in the room and there's a Scottish character and she says something and our main character Rowan had to be like what and I was like oh my god literally me when I first moved up to Scotland I could not understand anything for far too long I thought that when people were saying you're Ken that they were referring to someone called Ken it took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out that that's not what it means. A Scottish character says, oh, she was greeting or something, and she's like, what? And she's like, crying. <laughs> so, like, I relate. Oh, it takes me back to when I first moved here. Um, but anyway, yeah, reading that too. Now I'm going to go read Dark Lover. Okay, so I'm here with Tibbs. Started reading Dark Lover. Literally just reading the first paragraph makes me nervous. I'm going into this hoping that I will love it and want to continue on because it's a series and then I could figure out if I like paranormal romance or if I prefer historical or your standard contemporary, you know, all the different genres. I believe there's even fantasy and sci-fi adult romance. Um, but the first paragraph has me i'm not sure if this is gonna be my thing from the off immediately it says darius looked around the club taking in the teeming half-naked bodies on the dance floor screamers was packed tonight full of women wearing leather and men who looked like they had advanced degrees in violent crime so it's gonna be very tropey i think um <laughs> i'm not sure immediately i'm like oh god this is gonna be i don't know that's just the first paragraph. I won't update again until I'm actually into it and know what's happening, but just from that, them first few lines, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but hey, we shall see. We shall see. Hey, I've got my dressing gown on because it's kind of cold, but I am 50% of the way through this book. It is a very quick read. I was a little bit nervous at the length of it. And essentially the plot is we start off with this guy called Darius, he's a vampire and he wants to go to the king of the vampires, a guy called Wrath, spelt with a W. <laughs> the names in this are hilarious. There is also Rage and Torment and Sadist. 
yeah, it's, it's quite something. <laughs> but Darius has a daughter who's half human and he's worried that she's gonna have to go through the change to be a vampire too, because she's at her, she's around 25 and that's when it usually happens. So um, usually if someone's not a full vampire and they're half a vampire and they go through the change, it's very likely that they'll, that they'll die. So he wants her to be able to drink the king vampire's blood, his last purebred vampire so that it's less likely that she's gonna die and that she'll actually transition into a vampire properly. Raph is very broody, he's like six foot tall with a widow's peak, really long dark hair, he wears glasses all the time. He kind of reminds me of Keanu Reeves in the description. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I just keep thinking of uh, Bill and Ted. <laughs> and we all know Keanu is a sweet cinnamon roll. Also, this Raph guy, he's, you know, got a sweet side because of course he has. But at first he says no, he doesn't want to do that. Um, but then Darius is killed, so he wants to do his part a favour and go ahead and protect his daughter, Beth. Oh, I will say though, in the first or second chapter, um, we have Beth's perspective. We have quite a few different perspectives in this, um, but in Beth's perspective, initially, she's actually sexually assaulted, so trigger warnings for that, like someone tries to rape her, so that was a lot from the off. She also works for a newspaper, I think. I think she's a journalist or she's an editor or something. She works quite closely with the police. There's a detective guy called Butch who really fancies her that she's kind of like friends with. She hasn't had any sexual attraction to him or whatever, but we do have some um, chapters from him, well, parts from his perspective and I don't usually like um, books from the detective's point of view so I'm not really liking that we also have a creepy villain in here um, Raph is a part of a brotherhood of vampires and then there's this other organization or whatever who's at war with them or something and they're like killing people so there's a mystery in the background the plot's okay it's not bad I'm just not all that bothered yet and I'm already halfway through also there's only been two sex scenes but I buy the halfway point, which I'm surprised at. I thought there would be more, but they've been good, I guess. Not as explicit as I thought they would be. They have insta-lust, I'd say, as opposed to insta-love in this. I'm hoping there's gonna be some banter between the two characters at some point. <laughs> I guess Beth being our heroine, she's not overly naive. Like, she doesn't think, oh, we could be a vampire and Googles that, you know, like Bella did or anything. Also, the stereotypes um, have been kind of switched up as well. Um, all the cliches of vampires not being able to eat garlic or that kind of stuff things are different in here um, so I like how they've changed the story but I'm not loving it y'all I don't know what I fully feel about this yet as I'm only halfway through um, yeah so hopefully it'll be better in the second half I don't have a lot of thoughts just now and um, the plot is a little bit generic can I, I kind of have an idea about where this is gonna go um, but I do like Beth I do like Raph not overly connected to these characters or anything, but it's fun, you know, it's fun, it's easy. Halfway through, and yeah, I've just put a pizza on for me and Massey. He got me one pumpkin <laughs> from Tesco's, so I'll be carving that at some point after I've had some dinner. Also got myself a toffee apple. These are the best things ever. They are awful for your teeth, but I love them. And when I, I picked this up yesterday in Tesco, I actually got a couple, I've already had one. And when I saw them, I literally went, yes! in the shop, everyone looked, it was embarrassing, but I still stand by it. These are so good and you can only get them around this time of year. So yeah, that's what's happening. That's um, all I've read so far. So we're gonna have some dinner. Maybe carve that little pumpkin, it's a small one. Putting it next to my head for size reference, but gonna carve this. He didn't wanna have to carry it to home, which I get, you know, he was on his own, bless him. So yeah, pizza, pumpkin, paranormal romance. That's the plan for this evening. I'm pretty sure I can get this last book finished before the end of today, and then it'll be five challenges completed, five books read, and then maybe I could even finish up Lock and Key, but I doubt it. Bless you! <laughs> Massey sneezed. All right, I'll catch you later. Ew. I forget how messy this is every year. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Hey! <laughs> he looks cute, right? Adorable. He is adorable. What's his name? Oh, I don't know. What should we call him? Parry. Parry? Why Parry? No. Pat. Pat the pumpkin. No, because that's like Pat the dog. <laughs> I think he looks cute. 
His eyes are a bit wonky, but I think he looks cute. <laughs> Call him Spice Latte. <laughs> Spice Latte. Yeah, his name is Spice Latte. Halloween. Halloween. Hello my dudes, Spookathon is over and I'm kind of sad about it. I had such a good reading week this week. But I do need to wrap things up because I know this vlog is already pretty lengthy and I need to tell you about Dark Lover. I did finish it, which means I completed all five challenges, very proud of myself, which means I can tick this one off as well. So five books read, yay. And I need to talk to you about Dark Lover. So I don't think it's for me. <laughs> Not all adult romance, of course, but I just mean vampires. I had a phase, I was Team Edward, I read the Suki Stackhouse books a long time ago, loved them back then, and I know vampires are apparently making a comeback, and I don't know, maybe it was just this book, I'm not sure. A lot of the like names and references and things, I just kept chuckling at, and I don't think I was supposed to find it funny. <laughs> that being said, it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna read more adult romance definitely in the future. If you have any recommendations for me, any more paranormal ones that aren't set around vampires, that'd be good. The the plot was kind of predictable, I will say that. Also the mystery elements, I didn't really care about that much, especially the police detective's perspective. Not really bothered, but I feel like it's setting it up for the rest of the series, which I probably won't be reading. But the relationship was all right. I feel like Beth was a good character at the beginning, and then by the end we kind of lost her somewhere in the plot. And Raph was kind of possessive at times, although I feel like that's very typical of vampires. Let me know if I'm wrong, haven't read a lot. But the book generally was typically what I expected. Like I had an idea of what this would be going in and yeah, it didn't really surprise me. The sex scenes were good, although I felt like we had more in the first half. So we had the major two sex scenes, I'd say in the first half, then it kind of dwindled out towards the end. So not as sexy and smutty as I was expecting, not as explicit either. To sum up, the book didn't totally suck, but it wasn't something I could sink my teeth into. <laughs> and the stakes didn't feel all that high. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> and I'm out of vampire puns, but I think I gave it a 2.5, 2.75. It was fun, it was okay. Nothing I'm gonna remember really. And I just wasn't all that invested. And maybe I'm a little bit too cynical for romance because it happened really quickly. And I was over here as a realist being like, bitch really, I don't know. But I have a lot of more recommendations for adult romances, so I'll be reading more hopefully soon. Let me know if you want to see a video on that. I know that's been a trend on booktube in the last like few months or so. So if you want to see me do that as well, let me know if you're not bored of that kind of thing. And I didn't quite finish Turn of the Key by the end of Spookathon. I have about five hours left to go. I'm listening to it on two times speed, so I have about two and a half hours really. And I am really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I just didn't finish it out in the Spookathon week. <laughs> and also, I take back what I said earlier, the kids or one of the kids is being really creepy. It's really spooky, I really like it. Our protagonist is really interesting. I wanna find out more about her and I'm really hoping I love the ending because that's the clincher, right? The clincher is the ending of a thriller. I'm hoping to be surprised by the twist that is sure to be a thing. So I'll let you know about that in next week's vlog. So this week, like I said, read five books. Firstly, these four, I gave four stars to all of these books. My favorite out of these four though, I'm gonna have to say is horror store because it was a lot of fun and also buddy reading it with Gav was a lot of fun. This one as well I loved. I'm really happy. I read Deaf Mrs. Westaway. I think I'm enjoying Turn of the Key more and this one, this one was just, it's just gonna stay with me and probably haunt my dreams for a while. <laughs> so those and then Dark Lover which I gave a 2.5 or something too. So overall a really good week. I hope you guys had a successful reading week as well whether or not you participated in Spookathon. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you've read any of these. That's my journal. <laughs> if you've read any of these or Dark Lover and your thoughts on them. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Please like and subscribe if you did and you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one, my dudes. Bye, y'all.